Today we're gonna to be looking at this thing. It's called a Loop Deck Live. It's a little device that sits in your desk and you can use it to control your live stream. So things like toggling sources on and off in OBS, switching scenes, changing camera angles, even controlling your audio. Now, naturally, I know some of you guys are gonna be like, Nutty, is this thing better than a Stream Deck? I'm like, dude, relax, okay? We're like 20 seconds in the video. Just Settle down. Yeah, it's pretty similar to a Stream Deck and it's hard not to compare the two because they look so similar, but this does things a little bit differently to a Stream Deck. I've been playing around with the Loop Deck Live for a couple weeks now and TLDR, I'm not gonna say whether it's better than a Stream Deck, but I think for the right person, it might be. It definitely has a lot of things going for it that make me really excited for the potential of this sort of device. So let's talk about the Loop Deck Live. We'll see what it can do and help you decide whether this is the right streaming device for you. Big shout out to Loop Deck for not only sending me a Loop Deck Live to have a look at, but also sponsoring this video, which is dope because I like money. If you don't know, Loop Deck is a company that makes a lot of devices for content creators, primarily video editors and photo editors. But as far as I know, the Loop Deck Live is the first device in their lineup that is geared more towards live streamers. All right, so let's get this thing opened up and see what the device actually looks like. All right, so here's the box, which says Loop Deck on it, which is crazy. Opening up the box, we see we have the hell it's just a picture of obama yeah i obviously already unboxed it because i've been holding it the entire video have you guys even been paying attention i already did an unboxing over in my twitch stream so if you're not following me on twitch go do that right now don't worry i'll wait all right you've had enough time anyway here's some footage from that stream first off ASMR time you get a bunch of paperwork which i definitely read because i I know how to do that. You get the Loop Deck Live itself, which is pretty obvious because that's why you bought this thing. You get a USB-C cable, which is great because number one, it's removable. And number two, it's a nice braided cable. I just wish it was longer because this thing is super short. You also get a USB-C to type A adapter so you can actually connect it to a normal USB port on your PC. And last, you get this little plastic piece. This is just a stand that will prop up your loop deck. First off, this thing is super compact. Like it's a little bit bigger than a regular size stream deck, but smaller than a stream deck XL. But it's super thin and it's, it's really well built too. Now the little stand that it comes with, you kind of just snap it onto the back of it. Yeah, kind of like that. And it's fine, but it only really props it up on one angle and you can't adjust it at all. So I would rate the stand a little bit better than the Stream Deck regular, but nowhere near as good as the Stream Deck XL. All right, so let's get this thing plugged in. Now, we won't talk about the software just yet. We'll stick to the hardware for now. On the front, you're gonna see a grid of 12 buttons. These aren't actually buttons. This is actually a giant touchscreen. It's just separated by plastic to make him look like buttons. Now, at first I was disappointed because I actually wanted some tactile feedback when I pressed the buttons, but I actually found that it wasn't that big of a deal. Number one, you don't get that weird glare like you do on a regular Stream Deck when the light catches it on the wrong angle, but it also has a vibration motor inside of it. So you still get some haptic feedback every time you push a button. Also, because it's a touchscreen and not actually buttons, it allows you to just swipe between pages. Now, we'll get into pages a bit more when we look at the software. You also get a row of eight buttons, which you can program to do different things, and they're super clicky. They have a really nice feel to them. But the standout feature that really differentiates this from an actual Stream Deck are the six dials that you have on the sides here. This is something I wanted for the longest time on an actual stream deck because there are some things you wanna control in your stream that can't be controlled with simple digital buttons. For some things, you want analog control so you can do some fine tune adjustments. An obvious example of this would be for things like audio. You've got six dials here, so you can kind of use it like a tiny little mixer to adjust like your game audio, your microphone, Discord audio. So it's kind of like a Stream Deck and a GoXLR, like made a tiny little baby, you know? Is that how baby making works? All of these dials also click in. So if you want to just click in to like mute your microphone, you could do that. And in addition to that, you also have these vertical touch strips on the sides, 
which just show the information about what the dials do, but also you can double tap on the strip if you don't wanna click into the buttons. And you can also swipe between pages on the dials if for some reason six dials isn't enough for you. So like the Stream Deck, the Loop Deck comes with its own software that you need to install so that you can set up all of the buttons and all of the dials. And this is what the software looks like. Now, if you've already used a Stream Deck before, you're gonna have to do a little unlearning because this program works a little bit different. Rather than starting from an empty grid, it comes pre-populated with a bunch of profiles and each of these profiles is tied to different applications. Now, obviously you can change what each of these buttons do it's just that it comes with its own set of profiles to get you started. You can see a list of supported applications by clicking on application, and then you can see things like Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, and you can even install profiles for things like DaVinci Resolve if you use Resolve for editing like I do. But what you probably care most about is the support for OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. Erase Streamlabs. Here's where it's a little bit different to an actual Stream Deck. You can see here, I've got the default profile, which is like the Windows profile. But as soon as I bring OBS Studio into focus, it switches to a different profile. So this is kind of annoying because normally when you're streaming, you're not always gonna have OBS Studio in focus. So the solution to that is there's a little lock button here. And when you unlock it, now I can switch to different programs and it keeps on this OBS profile. So not a big deal, it's just something that you need to get used to. Now, while you can use a loop deck to edit videos and photos, in fact, this video right now, I edited using the loop deck. Uh, I'm not an expert on video editing. Also, my channel is primarily focused on streaming. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description box down below to a video that looks at the loop deck from the perspective of someone who edits videos. So, because we're all about streaming, let's switch over to the OBS Studio profile. Here's how this works. In the middle, you got a picture of your loop deck and if you click on the grid, this is where you can add and edit each of the 12 buttons. But if 12 buttons isn't enough for you, then you can click add new page to add as many pages as you want and then you can swipe between them just by swiping on the touchscreen with your finger. And then in the same way, you can click on the dials to program what each of the dials do same thing, it also has a plus page button so you can add infinite pages to add as many dials as you want. And if you click on the round buttons, you can program what each of the round buttons do. But these round buttons are special because no matter what page you're on, these buttons do the same thing every time. On the right, you have your workspaces and a workspace is pretty much like a page except it includes both the grid and your dials. So if you switch to any one of these pre-made workspaces, you can see that the grid is changing as well as the dials. But the main thing that matters is the actions on the left here. And this is what you can actually use to program each of the buttons and each of the dials. So for example, if I expand OBS Studio Actions, you can see all the different things that you can do with OBS Studio. If you go to streaming commands, you can toggle streaming and recording on and off. If for example, I wanted to create a button for like changing scenes in OBS, then I can go into the scenes dropdown and here you can see a list of all my OBS Studio scenes, which I have a lot of. But if you see this list, it matches exactly my OBS Studio setup here. So I have all of my scenes here. But let's just say I wanted to switch scenes to like my desktop scene. Then all I'd have to do is go into the software, drag a desktop button or action over to one of the buttons. And then now if you go back to OBS and I press this button, it changes scenes for me. And similarly, if I wanted to create a button to like toggle a source on and off, then I just find that source in my list here. So under my desktop, let's just say I wanted to toggle my camera on and off. I drag a camera over. And then now if I go back to OBS Studio and I just toggle my camera, you can see it toggles on and off. There are more actions as well, like for Windows. So if you want to have a button that like, I don't know, like, opens up Windows Explorer, then you can do that as well. But you can also add some Twitch actions. So you can do things like creating a clip, creating a marker, even showing your view count, which for me is zero. <laughs> but you also have moderation tools. So if you go in chat, you can do things like enabling slow mode, emote only mode, subscriber only mode or you can even send a chat message. So you just type in whatever message you want here. And when you press that button, it sends that to your Twitch chat. 
By the way, any of these actions here can also be applied to any of the round buttons. So if I wanted to have one of these round buttons like run an ad, then I just drag over run commercial onto say button seven. And then button seven here says run commercial. And I can just spam that like 50 times so I can make so much like ad revenue of like out of everyone in my stream. Cause that's really what I want. Okay, boring. This is all stuff that you can do on a regular stream deck. Show me what you can to do on a regular stream deck. Let me show you. If I go under OBS Studio Adjustments, this is where I can choose what each of the dials do. So if I wanted to create a dial for adjusting my microphone's audio, then all I do is I go to wherever my microphone is. So for me, it's my GoXLR, and I can just drag it over to one of the dials here. Then now, if I go over to OBS Studio and then just start turning this dial here, you can see that it's adjusting the audio of my microphone on the fly, but then I can click on the button and it mutes my microphone, or if I wanted to, I can just double tap on the touch strip and it does the same thing. So that's awesome. What's even better is if you follow my voice meter tutorial, you can separate all your audio for your microphone, your game, your music, Discord. You can separate all that into separate audio tracks, and then you can assign each of those tracks to a separate dial on the loop deck so if, for example, like you're streaming with some friends, if you have friends, I don't, but if you have friends, you can create a separate dial to adjust just your Discord audio without affecting your game audio, and you can adjust it in one of the dials so you don't have to click in OBS. So those are all the main functions of the loop deck. Now I want to move over to the one feature of the loop deck that I think has the potential to make it even better than an actual stream deck. And trust me, nobody else who's making loop deck videos on YouTube is going to talk about this. Only like this is such a me thing to talk about. But I think if you've been watching my YouTube channel for a long time, I think you guys are going to agree with me. And that feature is custom actions. Now, a custom action is basically the same thing as a multi action on a stream deck. But I think it has the potential to be just a little bit better, but in a big way. If you go over to custom actions here, you can click to add a new custom action and then you can just add different things here so you can add an action here so let's just say i want to add something that toggles my camera on and off so i'm going to add my camera here and we're going to add another action here to let's just say uh turn the background on and off then we're just going to take our multi-action drag it over any of the buttons and then now if i go into obs studio and i press that multi-action button you can see that it toggles my camera on and off as well as the background at exactly the same time. There is no delay between actions inside of a multi-action on a loop deck. And that doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you've ever used a stream deck and you've tried multi-actions before, you know that between every single action, there is a tiny little bit of delay and there's no way to turn it off. That may not sound like a big deal, but for someone like me, that's a massive deal because some of the macros that I have for my stream, like for example, my instant replay feature, those rely on multi-actions. And if you have delays between every single action, it completely breaks the effect and you just can't do it. This is why in that instant replay video, I didn't recommend a stream deck because you just had that delay and it was impossible to get rid of it but you don't have that at all in a loop deck and that's awesome. By the way, if you did want to add a delay for whatever reason, there is an option for adding a delay. You just go in here, you add a delay, you type in whatever you want, like 500 milliseconds, you press the plus sign, and then you can add a delay if you wanted to. So you do have that option still. Now, note that I did say it has the potential to be better than a stream deck, not that it definitively is better than a stream deck, and that's because it's missing a few features we're going to start off with the big feature that's missing, filter support. Now, granted, a Stream Deck doesn't support filters either, which is crazy to me. I mean, I know you can install OBS tools, but that's buggy and it doesn't work properly. I have talked about it in a previous video. But one of the features that I wish the Loop Deck had is support for toggling filters on and off. Like, for example, like, let's just say I had a filter to make my camera blurry. I would love to be able to touch a button on my loop deck to turn that filter on and off or and this would be mind-blowing to me that i don't think they're gonna add this but just the, i'm putting this thought out there just in case they want to it would be amazing if i could assign that blur filter 
to one of the dials so that when I turn the dial, it changes the intensity of that blur filter. I just think that would be amazing. I just don't know if they're gonna add that in there. But at the very least, I think Loop Deck should add filter support so that you can do complicated things like that rewind macro that I talked about in that other video. If there's one feature they need to add, they can add filter support. I think the Loop Deck can really pull itself away from a Stream Deck for a lot of people. Other features that I think the Loop Deck is missing, keep in mind, like the software for the Loop Deck is very new and they're gonna be adding more features as time goes on but you can add custom images for each of the buttons. You can add it for custom actions, but not for any of the other regular buttons. Now they did tell me that they are gonna add that in in a future update. Just know that right now it can't do that. And while you can't have a custom icon for custom actions, you can actually assign it to GIFs. So if you wanna have like an animated GIF for any of the buttons, you can't do that at the moment. Don't know if they're gonna add that in, but that would be cool. It's also lacking a lot of integration for a lot of other platforms. Like at the moment, it only supports Spotify and Twitch integration, but it doesn't have any sort of integration like for YouTube or for Facebook streaming or for Discord. So I'd like to see them add that in. I also noticed that the dials didn't have any information in it. So for example, if I change the volume of my Discord audio before I press to mute it, it didn't actually show the volume on the dial, which I was expecting it to. So I'd like to see them add that in. Also, I found that the list under the OBS actions was pretty messy. Like for example, it lists every single scene and every single source in the list here. And it wouldn't be that big of a deal for most people because like I have a lot of scenes and a lot of sources, but if they ever added like filter support, then there'd be like another level and every single one of these sources here would also have filters underneath it. So. I can imagine this being very, very messy. What I think would have made more sense is over on the left here, you should just have basic things like change scene or toggle source on and off. And then you can drag that action over to one of the buttons. Then you can like right click on one of the buttons and then change what that scene actually is. At the moment, there's no right click on any of the buttons. So I think it'd be really cool if you just right click on a button so you can just like quickly change things like you can right click on a change scene button and then you can change what that scene is for that button. And then finally, I swear this is my last complaint. It sounds like I got a lot of complaints, but like this is a feature I just really like to see added. In the custom actions menu, I like how multi actions work, but I wish they had like a multi action switch like they have on a stream deck. Like for example, on my camera, the only option I have is to toggle my camera on and off. I can't like set the state of my camera to enabled and if it's already enabled, don't disable it. Just make sure it's enabled. But yeah, those are the features I'd like to see added. There's probably more that I'm forgetting, but if there's one feature that they must add, please add filter support because this is the one feature that I think could really set the loop deck apart from the stream deck. That's right, yeah, I'm talking directly at you, loop deck. Yeah, I'm talking to you, yeah. Don't look away. So conclusion, what do I think about the Loop Deck? I think it's a really compelling device and I'd love to see where the software is like six months from now. As it is right now, I think it's a pretty solid alternative to the Stream Deck if you also want to adjust your audio on the fly because the dials are pretty clutch. It's easily the best feature of this thing. If you're one of those crazy people that have like four different control decks on your desk already and you wanna add another Stream Deck to the mix, I think the Loop Deck would be perfect for you because it fills in a lot of the gaps that the Stream Deck has. But hey, that's just me. Guys, let me know what you think. Did you guys like the Loop Deck? Are you gonna stick with your regular Stream Deck? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you have more questions about the Loop Deck, make sure to jump in my Twitch stream. I'm always doing just chatting and doing Q&A and you guys can ask me all your streaming questions there. Or you can join the Discord. We got a huge community of streamers who are always asking questions and there's people way smarter than me in there. With that said, I gotta go. I got a ton of editing to do before I go to sleep. So I'll see you guys next week. There's nothing in here. I just thought it would look really slick if I ended the video like that. Anyway, I'll see you guys next week.